Sharon Baker is on the stage. So before you start your presentation, I would like to uh, tell a brief introduction about you to the audience. So ladies and gentlemen, it is with immense pleasure that I introduce our speaker, Sharon Baker, a true luminary in the realms of coaching, mentoring, and entrepreneurship. Sharon brings over 25 years of corporate wisdom at the stage as the CEO of Embracing Abundance Life Coaching LLC. Sharon is not just a seasoned professional, but a compassionate guide on the transformative journey from scarcity to abundance. With a master's degree in pastoral counseling and a commitment to fostering prosperity in every aspect of life. She stands as a beacon for those seeking to break free from limitations and build lives they truly adore. Get ready to be inspired, motivated, and equipped with the tool for transformative success as we welcome Sharon Baker to share her invaluable insights with us today. So that's a really great presentation, introduction, uh, Sharon Baker. So the stage is all yours. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I am so happy to be here today. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here. Once again, uh, I want to start out with a concept. Um, I am a mindset coach and I want to share one aspect of mindset coaching with you. Mindset is the mental attitude that determines how we interpret and how we respond to situations. Let me repeat that once again. Mindset is the mental attitude that determines how we respond and interpret what happens to us, our situations. So in a nutshell, folks, mindset is everything. I thank those wonderful ladies for such a gracious introduction. So you know a little bit about me, but I'm going to share with you what I like to do in the world as well. I like to help aspiring entrepreneurs and emerging leaders get clarity on their vision, we also incorporate abundance mindset techniques so that they can create the life, business, and career with their, that they love. We also do that by incorporating and sharing with them some really amazing marketplace strategies that position them for greatness in their field. You know, as we are approaching uh, International Women's Day, and as we have entered into this month of Women's History Month, I want you to just take a moment to be reminded of some of the women that may have been motivating to you throughout the course of your life. You know, I've had an opportunity to glean and get so much knowledge from so many different people, but none of them have been as effective or have been as intense or even funny as my grandmother, Betty May. See, Betty May was a woman of small stature and few words but she had an amazing impact on me and our family. I remember as a child, even into adulthood, visiting her and she would make the best amazing food. See, her meals would capture me before I could even get into the house. And if we were able to visit her on any particular morning, she was sure to prepare the best Southern breakfast that your heart would desire, a meal that was fit for a king or a queen. She would make things like bacon and sausage and eggs and all of these wonderful things. But my most favorite meal of hers were her biscuits. She had the most divine biscuits that would melt in your mouth and she would make gravy to complement those. So you wonder, what does this have to do with anything? Well, I'm going to tell you, she showed me and she taught me something very amazing during that time. She would make plates for us and she would say, do not waste this food. Someone had to pay for this meal. And so we don't want to waste it. Folks, at the time, I thought she was simply implying that we needed to clear our plates. But as I grew older and became an adult, I realized that waste nothing was more than about the food that we leave on our plate. See, life in and of itself is like a buffet. 
it's like a buffet in which we experience some really wonderful dishes. And we consider those to be good experiences, good things that we have that come to our lives. But then we have some of these other experiences that are not so appealing. They may be bitter. They may even give us heartburn. But with either type of dish we entertain, we are in both cases able to extract things that will help our body be strong, but also things that will help our soul. See, the concept of waste nothing met me at the age of nine, the tender age of nine. Let me ask you a question, folks. And if you feel like responding, do so in the chat. At the age of nine, I came up against what I consider to be the most difficult time in my life. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you had a weight that was so heavy on you that you feel you were a person, of, a place of defeat until you lost your voice? Well, that happened to me. That happened to me. See, during that time, just imagine yourself as a child that when with every book that you would read was an enemy, every page was a battlefield. It was a fight to get through a book, folks. And so there I was in a place of embarrassment, in a place of shame. And so I didn't want anybody to know that I was struggling with the reading. See, back in the day, we did not have the same concept as we do now, where we speak readily about ADD or even dyslexia. So what they would do during that time, they would place us in these appropriate classes to help us with um, us, help us to get to the level of everyone else. But it was not in one of those special classes that I got my revelation. It was in a regular science class. I was able to do something I had never done before. Well, listen, we were posed with this science test. That was a vocabulary test. So we had words to learn. And I never will forget, I can't remember any of the other words on the test, but I can remember the 14 letter word that was called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. I looked at that word and I felt defeated again. But then the more I stared at that word, I was like, I am going to overcome this. So what I did, folks, I dissected it. I looked at it from this angle. I did some, I analyzed the situation and I broke that word down. And before you knew it, I owned it. I was able to spell it and I did very well on my vocabulary test. And that was the first time I felt empowered again. The first time that I was able to get that back. See, waste nothing in and of itself is this that we take advantage of everything that happens to us. We don't leave the discarded things on the plate. All of us is needed in order to take us to the different level. See, West Nothing has fared me very well throughout my career out in corporate America, as a coach, as a mom, and all aspects of my life. Whenever you look for anything that's happened in your life, and you decide to take advantage of everything. You don't discard any of those experiences. That's when you get into waste nothing. The reason that I share that story with people, I let people know what is possible if you will focus and have a plan. And so that is what I want to share with you today. I want to share with you a couple of aspects of what we call the waste nothing uh, framework. It is a process called the FBR method. Most of you may have heard of the term FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, where the FBR method is a different type of perspective. So let's get into it. So we've got the F in FBR, means face your fears. That is something that some of us find very hard to do. You know, there is something that says that fear in and of itself is false evidence appearing real that it's really not there, that most of the time we conjure those things up in our mind and they get reinforced. But fears can be overcome. We have people that have a fear of failure. Then there's a fear of success, believe it or not. Then there are all these different fears in between. Whatever fear you struggle with, they can be overcome. So we're going to talk about ways that we can do that. The first thing you want to do, you want to identify one fear that's been holding you back. Now, some of them are very sophisticated that you may need the help of someone else, but you got to start somewhere. Start with that one fear. Write it down. There's something about visualization that puts us in the present time. Then talk about the narrative behind why it exists. 
in the first place. Then I challenge you to come up with one thing that will help you no longer have that fear. So if you are afraid of swimming, maybe swimming lessons is that first step or just getting in the water is that first step to help you get to that point. Whatever it may be, you identify the fear. You come up with a strategy for overcoming the fear. Then you start to visualize a world where the fear doesn't exist, where it is gone. And that is the way we shift our thinking. Remember, mindset is everything. So the other thing that I want to talk to you about is the fact that people have fear of also succeeding. Can you believe that? People have fear of succeeding as well as fear of failure. Now, what people don't understand about fear of failure, it is our friend because it allows us to learn from that experience. And the next time we have that experience, we are more equipped to handle it. It's like having the answers to the test before you take it. But then the fear of success is even a caveat to the fear of failure, believe it or not. There's a quote that really, really brings this concept to, to home for many people. And, it's, and, it's, and it goes like this. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. Many times the fear of succeeding has a fear attached to it of its own because you have to step up your levels. You have to step up the things that you want to do. And so many people equate that back to, oh my goodness, equate that back to failure. So whatever your fear may be, think about that as we go. So we've talked about one step in the facet of fear, but those fears can be overcome with consistency it can be. So the next step in our FBR process is the B folks. And the B is for break down complex challenges. When I was tasked as a child with this colossal word that was 14 letters for a person that struggled with reading and phonics, I was able to break it down, not by sound, but by things I was familiar with. I knew the word photo. I knew the word the, I knew the word SN. I know the word S-I-S, which is, so I, I equated to something I already knew, and that's how I was able to tackle it. So if those things that you've been procrastinating on, let's pick one. Most of our procrastination comes because we don't think we're going to have enough time to do something. So pick one of those things that you've been procrastinating on. And with that said, we want to come up with a plan to overcome it. Give yourself some task lists but also issue yourself some accountability. Accountability comes in when we actually set deadlines and dates to complete things because we have a timeline. Just to say we're gonna do it, it never gets done. It gives us a level of accountability. And once that goal is set and once that timeline is created, the next thing that we want to do is we want to execute consistently. See, we, a lot of times we have a wonderful plan. We even have a timeline, but we don't execute. And then we don't execute consistently. Executing consistently will ensure that the goal is met. And then after that one goal is met, folks, we have an opportunity to start another one. So that is the B in the FBR method. The last component of the FBR method is the R. The R, recognizing our strengths. That is such a wonderful thing that we want to do because recognizing our strengths constantly reminds us of our potential, but there's twofold. So when we think of our strengths, we think of those things that we are naturally equipped in without even trying. Many people relay these or call them what we call superpowers, those superpowers that we um, inhale. So what we want to do with those, we have to think about the gist of it. When we think about superheroes, we got Superman, but for the sake of our conference here, we're going to talk about Supergirl, his cousin, who has many of the same uh, um, talents and the same things that he, he can do. So Supergirl can fly. She can see through things that we can't see. She has supersonic hearing. She has all of these wonderful gifts, but because she has them, she doesn't need them for herself. She uses them to help mankind. And we have to do the same thing with our superpowers. So I'm going to task you in this third step to 
write down three of those things that you're gifted in. And next to that, I want you to determine how you're going to use those to serve others. Yes, to serve others. Because when we serve others, that is when our gift has an opportunity to grow and to be cultivated. Because remember, our gifting is not for us. It's for the world. It's for the people that we can help with it. And the more we help, the more it will be cultivated. That is fantastic. So think about that. So let's go back and do a little recap a minute of the FBR process. The FBR process, the F, we want to face our fears. Yes, the B, we want to break down things into complex, complex challenges. We want to we want to break those things that are that are um, that we say are um, um, taking us back um, from one thing to another. We want to look at those things and make sure that we have them broken down into a timeline that is readily available for us to do what we need to do. That makes it a great thing for us to do. And then the final part of that FBR process, folks, is for us to remember, remember, remember our superhero strengths or our superpowers. Those are the things that are going to make us contribute to our society. But remember, we have the gifts for others, not for ourselves. Therefore, we cannot do what we need to do in the world unless those things are shared. I'm going to give you an opportunity here. We're going to go back and I'm going to share my screen with you at the end here. But I want to just bring you back to our conversation again. I asked you earlier, what are you leaving on your plate? My grandmother would say if she were here today, she would say, we don't need to leave anything on our plate. See, the waste nothing concept is a wonderful thing. And what it basically says here, what it basically says, if when we waste nothing, we have an opportunity to grow more. When we waste nothing, it is like this recipe for life because we will achieve more, we will grow more, we'll be able to do more when we don't waste anything. So what I wanna do for you in, in celebration of the fact that we're here today, also in celebration of women's history. And if I can pull this, this particular thing up, I'm going to share it with you. I'm going to share my screen with you. Because of, I'm going to have to go to it. I want to, first of all, go back over the FBR method, which is face your fears and your challenges. Identify that thing that challenges you. Commit to doing one thing and overcoming. Imagine your life without the fear. Break down things into complex challenges, okay? Um, and you do that by selecting an area of focus, breaking those tasks down into smaller chunks. Remember, I did that with the word. Commit to, to a start date and a finish date because if we don't give ourselves a timeline, it doesn't happen. And practice consistent execution. The R, recognize your strengths, okay? Then list three of your superpowers, your gifts or talents. And then next to that gift, Think about how you're going to activate each one of your superpowers to serve others. So what I want you to do is... Hi, Sharon. Hi. Yes, sorry. hi. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we can see your screen. I mean, the desktop, we can see number of uh, many files. Okay, so, I'm sorry. I can't. So did you select any particular file? Because we can see all your files from the desktop. Okay, no, no, I did. I did. I... um. Let me let me stop sharing. Okay. I was sh um, showing my um, and I don't see. Let me let me come out of this. When I went into share, let me go back for a minute. And I'm going to. Are you? Am I still sharing with you? No. Okay. I'm going to go back to. Um, what I was trying to do was share um, this PowerPoint. Um, okay. But you still don't see it? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, 
because I'm I'm having these this these because I I see it coming up as being shared, but but you guys don't see it as being shared. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to go back, and what I'll do is just share my website um, oh, yeah. where you can go to get this wonderful gift, and what it is as part of uh, Women's um, History Month and International Women's Day and actually being a companion to what I just talked about, which was talking about overcoming your fears. It's one. This is the first step in what we call our FBR process. I have a book called From Fear to Fearless, From Fear to Fearless, and it's going to give you some practical tools to help you with that first step in the FBR process, to help you with that first step. So what I can do is maybe I can attach it, but the website is embracingabundancelifecoaching.com backslash face your fears. Embracingabundancelifecoaching.com. No, it's actually instead of face your fears, it's from fear to fearless. From fear to fearless is actually the, the, the thing that we want to do. So I encourage you to go out and get that particular resource. Uh, it is just free and it's been very, very helpful to other people I've shared it with. But I want to conclude on this note when it comes to the waste nothing concept. I want you guys to remember that we all have an opportunity to be our best selves. And that means many times us making sure that we don't forget the things that are not so good in our lives, using those things to grow, to, to excel, to become our next. So if you have a, a mess in your life, I encourage you to turn it into a message. Yes, if you have some pain, I wish that you would take that pain and turn it into purpose. And then you want to use your story. You want to use your story to motivate others as much as you can. Just remember, waste nothing, waste nothing. If my grandmother were here today, like I mentioned, she was asked, what you were leaving on your plate? And she would say, you need to leave nothing because everything needs to be consumed. So you have a great, fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of this year. 2024 is going to be awesome. I see it coming and I encourage you to make the but, the best and make the most out of your life. Now I could take the opportunity to take any questions if we have any. I'm going to look. I don't see any questions in the question box. I'm going to try one more time to see if I can share the screen with you guys. I'm not sure exactly about how much time I have left. Uh, in my presentation, I just want to make sure I didn't go over. I think I, I think I figured out how I can do this. So I'm gonna try one more time. I see your screen. Can you see it now? No. Okay. Because once I share it with you guys, I can't see it after that. Click on, uh, so just click on the file you want to share. Okay. Well, when I go to do that, mm -hmm. I'm still, um, it's still not showing. I can see it. I can it when I when I click on that to share, 
I can see it, but it's not, it's just, it's not showing you guys for whatever reason. Yeah, it is now shared. It is okay. Yeah, click here. Uh, so it, click on that. Click on that. It is not see, open. I see, what, I see, I see what you, what you guys are seeing. No, it's not opening. It's not, your file is not opening. So you cannot share until it is open. Got you. I got you. Open your uh, presentation and we can share directly. Okay. You said what now? Open your PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Click on the arrow button. So click on uh, share screen, uh, click on entire screen and click on the, uh, the file which was already opened. Because when I click on it, it opens up. Okay, click on entire screen. You will see three tabs when you sh when you click on share screen. So you'll get two tabs: share screen and share select PDF file. So click on share screen, and if, when you click on share screen, you will get three tabs: Chrome tab, Window, and Entire Screen. So click on Entire Screen, okay, and click on the PDF you want to show to the audience. So click on share. Do you want us to share it from our side? If you can, if you can share this, um, that will that will be great. But um, I guess I don't understand why I can see it because when I'm clicking on it, it's opening up. Uh, did you click on the entire screen? If you share the entire screen, we'll be able to see it. So once you share your uh, screen, it will give you the three options available. Chrome, window and entire screen. Uh, no worries. Can, can you please send to our email if you have it? Yeah, I can, I can. I can. I can send it to your email. That'll be great. Yeah, we'll be share sharing from our side. Okay. So you just want me to send the one that says contact? Yes. Yeah, please. Okay, I sent it to the WIN conferences community. Is that fine? So you can actually be able to see it.
did you send it to contact at windconferences.com? That was the one that came up that said win conferences community. So I wasn't really sure if that said contact, if that was contact or not. Can you uh, send it to contact at winconferences.com? Contact at I will put it in the chat. I have sent in the chat. Can you please check and send to that email ID? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you should have gotten it um, now. No. No, we didn't receive Sharon. Okay, let me try it again. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we have this. You have it now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we are sharing one. Okay. Uh, I hope you understand. There is five minutes left uh, for your session. So okay. Yeah. Let's just look and see. If there's going to be any questions. I want to give myself some time, so I kind of cut it a little bit shorter. Okay, so, we are sharing from our side. Uh, let me know if you are able to see, okay? Okay. So far, I don't. Where, where would I see it at? One second. Okay, uh, so Sharon, now we, mm -hmm. we can to see the screen. That's good. Can you see? Yes, yeah, I can see it now. This is just to, just to kind of recap the FBR method. And I was just looking to make sure I didn't have any questions about we talked about the facing your fears and breaking down complex challenges. Those are the wonderful things that are part of this. And the, the beauty of this is that when you implement them, that's when you will see a shift in your mindset and your thinking once you start to see your fears being exasperated and you're accomplishing things and that you can hone on on your skills. Now, the second slide, because there's only two slides in this particular presentation, is has to do with the free gift. This is what I was talking about from fear to fearless. Um, this is a wonderful resource to help you navigate that first step in the FBR process. The only thing you have to do is take a picture of that um, QR code, it will take you right to the site and you just can download it and it will help you uh, in the process of, of uh, facing those fears that we talked about. Remember, false evidence appearing real. That's what the fears are. 
as soon as we can conquer those things, we can achieve what we want to do in life. Um, we can do that. So those are the two things. Thank you so much for pulling it up for me so I could share that. Um, very, very, very happy to be with you guys today. And I apologize for the technical difficulties, but I hope that you were able to extract some really good nuggets that you can take with you um, during the course of the day. One of the concepts or many of the concepts, but don't forget to pick up that guide. It's going to be very helpful to you in many ways. I was just looking to see that I have any questions. I don't see any questions. Do you guys have any questions for me? Oh, thank you so much, Shannon. Uh, that was a lovely presentation. So you, you really um, presented it very well. I can see that in your PowerPoint presentation. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, sir, we do have a question from our audience. Uh, that is, how do you handle stress and setbacks at what and what strategies uh, to currently you use uh, for your self-care oh, so as far as you said what strategies i didn't hear the last part of what you said so you use for your self-care what strategies do you use for oh, your yes i believe in self-care so i do um i do um what we call these this walk and it's kind of it's kind of cold here well a little bit cold here where I live now. When it's nicer weather, I go outside and do it. It only takes about 15 minutes. You walk around by, you kind of get your center. That's one thing. And it gives you this area uh, of peace. Um, the other thing, I'm always doing something re relaxing. Uh, it may be anything as simple as a bubble bath. All of those things make a difference. It, it gives you an opportunity to take a good care of yourself. So self-care is so important um, in the strategies that we use in order for us to show up as our authentic selves. So those are just a couple of things, simple things that I do. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon, uh, for uh, joining this uh, event and sharing your wonderful presentation with the audience. So please join our next speaker sessions as well and show some love till the end of the saving. Thank you. And please join our next speaker, Denise. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.